Yeah, I would like to officially welcome you all to the first in-person live event. Paano ba to live at Volume 11? Yay! And so, yeah, the, the theme we thought of for this particular live is Courage and Confidence for 2023. Are there some actionable steps we can do to build confidence slowly? Confidence is something that we practice, right? So it's really important to, to practice and, and prepare. Your husband plays basketball, he's a professional athlete. I'm sure that confident shot in a game it doesn't come spontaneously or randomly. That one shot behind that would be hundreds and thousands of shots that he practiced outside of the game. So it's also really important that we dedicate ourselves to, to practicing whatever it is we need to build confidence on, whether it's our work, interest, Interest, a hobby, or even things like speaking up for ourselves, having hard conversations, standing up for self-respect. Those are things that we need to practice. This is my problem. Complaining about an order. Yung parang kung may mali sa order mo or like may gusto ka i-adjust, nahihiya ako. Ano ang yun? So, you mean little things like that. But if you start with the little things, hopefully it will build up to the the bigger things. That's right. That's right. Sometimes it comes from listening to ourselves first. Eh? Parang learning to listen and pause. How am I feeling about this? So we can validate. If we're not feeling okay about something, I think it's hard to act wisely when we're not pausing and being mindful of what am I really experiencing? Um, and it's important that we're able to validate that. Check the facts on our fears. Am I acting on hidden assumptions that are reinforcing my fears, but it's not really matching up with the reality. There's really not enough evidence to support this assumption. And sometimes we need to practice avoiding avoidance. <laughs> because sometimes we we learn to avoid. We have our own avoidance strategies. Oh, because, oh, okay. Avoiding avoidance. Okay, how do we do that. When we are afraid of something, let's say I'm afraid of speaking up about something that's been feeling so unfair or unjust for me, listen and pause. Why am I feeling this way? What's making me feel this way? What's my hidden assumption? What What's blocking me from speaking up? Is it because, you know, I have some feelings that I, I don't I don't deserve better, that uh, they're not gonna listen anyway. If I can check the facts on that and I feel like, no, this is the wise thing to do is to stand up for myself, I need this in order to grow, then the avoid avoidance would be, I'm gonna take a step. <laughs> and maybe the first step might not be talking to the person right away, it could mean rehearsing, it could mean talking to a friend who f is supportive and safe so that you can practice that conversation. Yeah, yeah. This is like not in my list of questions that I've asked you, but bakit on social media? Parang sometimes doon confident tayo, pero pag in person na, parang, ay, parang iba na. Why? <laughs> That is very interesting. Maybe the I don't know. Online, you can say what you want. But if it's personal, yes, yes. Maybe there are two sides to that. In a way, there's a sense of hiddenness that allows us to experiment and to take risks more, which can be a good thing. But sometimes, we end up saying things that can be harsh or hostile. So it's something that we also need to check so that it doesn't end up being hurtful yeah. to us. Yeah, meaning not everything naman we're confident to say, not in person, is something that we should say in person. Right. So confidence also comes from connecting with our wise self. So the wise self is, how do I feel about this? But you know, also going through the logic of, is this the right thing to do? What would be the consequences on myself and on others if I do this? Is it fair? So you can take a step that you know is coming from that wise self. You go through that process. Yeah. Um, on the other side of our theme, we have the word courage. Parang very similar terms on confidence and courage, but merong mga nuances, may differences. Courage is sometimes such a big word, right? Parang you have the courage 
to pursue your dreams or like courage to fight for what you believe in. Parang it's such a big concept. But if you if you break it down, sometimes I feel what gets in the way of being courageous, kumbaga, is a particular mindset. So are there particular mindsets that we can shift so that we can stand on the side of courage? Courage is an everyday practice. Parang there is no way to courage. Courage is the way. <laughs> I think. So it's it's taking, you know, each it's it's each step that we take. And one of the first things that come to mind when it comes to mindset is growing the capacity for internal validation. I think we're geared towards looking for external validation. So pleasing and appeasing others is a big part of our culture. Internal validation is the capacity to trust ourselves, to listen to ourselves. Yes, we listen to others and we take their feedback, but we also develop the trust to, to, to listen to how we feel, what we need, and what our values are so we can act on it with conviction. And we might make mistakes, but it's the only way sometimes. Yeah. I think that's one of the biggest fears slash things on our mind that's keeping us from having the courage to do something is all those fears. And I know Crazy broke down the different kinds of fears that we might be feeling. Um, but as a, I guess as a big picture, what are usually the things you advise in your practice when it comes to dealing with fear? It goes back to av avoiding avoidance. You know, there are a lot of people who come to therapy now for, for anxiety and fear. The, it precedes depression na as the most prevalent, you know, mental health problem. And it's, um, I think, facing fear is important. So one of the things that we do is really help people create safe experiments to, to face their fears. For example, thinking of a client who was so afraid of showing up for interviews, trying to look for a job, because she felt, you know, she didn't have enough skills. We took it one step at a time. It meant um, helping her understand where the anxiety is coming from, and then the practice of, you know, looking for a job that matches her skills and her strengths, practicing for interviews. And then, actually yesterday, she surprised me by saying, Doc Jabby, I have a job now. I was, I have, I found a job with a, you know, with this, with a restaurant group, and I'm just so happy to share it. So, it's a lot of small steps. She allowed herself to face her fears a little at a time. Yeah. yeah. Actually, if there's one thing I've been learning through this whole journey of doing Panama but ever since before, it's that the small steps matter. Sometimes we don't think na late lang naman ito. Attend ako ng paano ba to live? Siguro, maybe one of you were thinking later, wag na kaya ako mag-attend, nakakahiya, baka tanungin ako doon, di ko alam sa sagunod ko. But like, it's that's just little steps of showing up when your friends invite you, raising your hand when teacher calls you. Parang, we think wala lang, pero hindi. Meron, meron. <laughs> <laughs>